So let's begin with the first one, which is the Miniconda 3 distribution. Now, we've encouraged the use of Anaconda distributions throughout the course of our Darwin API tutorial series. However, this is not essential. Uh, you may just download the individual components and set up your own environment accordingly. So feel free to ignore the Miniconda 3 distribution tutorial should you not require Conda. However, if you have been following the tutorials where you've downloaded Anaconda 3, Miniconda 3 is a much smaller version of the Conda distribution that effectively just contains Conda itself, the package manager, as well as the essentials such as Python. And this will allow us to keep a lean distribution uh, on our VPS server as opposed to having the entire Anaconda 3 distribution and all its bells and whistles. In here, we'll also install only those libraries that we actually need for running our project that we've built over time through the Darwin API tutorial series. And these include pandas, numpy, matplotlib, requests, and plotly. Now, matplotlib and plotly are not required on your VPS, so we don't need to install them. However, there are places in the code base uh, that we've written so far where there is inline referencing to matplotlib and plotly. And for that purpose alone, we will install matplotlib and plotly as well for the moment. However, future iterations of those code bases will isolate plotly and matplotlib references. So if you're on a VPS or you're, or you're in an environment where you won't be visualizing data, your code doesn't have to refer to those, those modules and have to necessarily have them installed on the VPS as well. In terms of the Miniconda distribution, without us going into a remote desktop environment for the moment, this is accessible via simply doing a Miniconda 3 search in Google. So you can simply do Miniconda 3 distribution here and you'll arrive at the Conda documentation. Inside the Conda documentation, it'll give you a few options as to Python 3 or Python 2. Since the Darwin API GitHub project has been written in Python 3, if you're running a 64-bit system, download the 64-bit installer. If you're running a 32-bit system, then download this installer under the Windows tab. Once you've downloaded this installer, you'll need to go ahead and install it as follows. So let's click on the downloaded file. And um, there's really nothing custom to the installation. What we would recommend is that uh, you don't change anything and during the installation unless it's absolutely critical that you change the location, the destination folder of your Miniconda 3 installation. On most Windows VPS servers, as we'll be covering Windows Server 2012 primarily in this um, tutorial series, you'll have your directory structure set up um, like so as well. You'll have your user and usually it's uh, administrator or some other custom username uh, followed by uh, the directory. So leave it as is if it's not essential for you to change it. Otherwise change it but make sure you remember that directory name so you can refer to it later in your code base when you need to edit any necessary path references. And that's it. Simply go ahead and click um, that option now register anaconda as my default python 3.7 this is not checked at the moment because uh, there is another an anaconda distribution already installed on this machine and this installation uh, example has only been conducted being conducted as far as the install will take us before we click install and we won't actually click install register anaconda as my default python 3.7 you should check this if there's no other python distribution installed on your vps server that you're relying on uh, uh, if you have another distribution installed but aren't using it, it's probably a better idea to first get rid of it and then come back here and do a fresh installation of Miniconda 3. So check this if you don't already have one. See, we're getting a message. So we're getting a message now that says the version of Python 3 is already in so and so. Therefore, we recommend that if you want Anaconda registered as your system, Python, you unregister Python first, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the idea. And finally, click install and the uh, distribution will ins get installed in the path that you specified or selected earlier. And that's it. So we'll get out of this now and go back to um, the actual installation and configuration. So once you've installed Miniconda 3, then you'll need to have uh, the relevant Conda environment as well as modules that are required by the Darwin API Python repository as we've built over time that is available to you open source on GitHub. To do so, we'll first log into our VPS so we can show you how this is all set up there. 
We've now connected remotely to the Windows Server 2012 VPS server and over here we need the following to be installed in order for the project to work in its current state. Future iterations of the project will remove any inline references to Plotly and Matplotlib, so your essentially your three requirements will be pandas, numpy and requests. In order to do this, you need to open an anaconda prompt and this is achieved by pressing the window key on your Windows machine and then simply typing anaconda until you see the anaconda prompt which is miniconda3. Once you click on this you'll get a miniconda prompt and here your base environment is the first environment that will be loaded. It is recommended that you set up a separate environment for your trading strategies as you may have other requirements for your base directory or you may install conflicting modules in future that may cause problems for your trading strategy environment. Therefore it's best to first create an environment for yourself and inside that environment install the necessary packages for your trading strategy using the Darwin API. So here to do so we'll we won't install things in our base directory. Instead, we will create an environment for ourselves specifically for our strategy. So we'll say conda create dash dash name and then give it a name. So let's say automation automated env1 and that's what we'll call it. This will send conda off to create that environment and environment location is now inside users, administrator, miniconda3, env's, automated env1. Press Y to proceed and it will go ahead and do so. Once you've created your environment, you then need to activate your environment and this is achieved through conda activate, the name you gave your environment earlier. In our case, it was automated underscore env1. This, as you'll see, will change the prefix to your shell prompt here uh, with C users administrator being preceded by automated env1. Now this is an empty environment where we'll install the necessary packages, modules that we need for our trading strategy to use the Darwin API project on GitHub. And to do so, we need to enter the following commands. Conda install numpy pandas and requests. And this will go away and find those packages for us and install those accordingly. Press Y if you agree with all the additional dependencies that will be installed as well. And that will go away and start processing those transactions, downloading the necessary files and packages and installing them for you. And that's it. That will result in the dependencies for the Darwin API code repository being installed and you're now ready to use the code base that you have been using for your trading strategies on your Windows VPS. That is all we needed to do for the installation and configuration component uh, of this tutorial series. We'll now move on to strategy setup and batch scripting as well as scheduling tasks. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.